Okay, Kevin, thanks for doing this. Um, obviously, I, I know you through your role in Malaysia as the executive director of the Country Heights Group, um, but obviously you've had a long history in cryptocurrencies and in Bitcoin. Um, before we talk about you, I, I'd just like to tap your, your brain in terms of why mm -hmm. the, Bitcoin share part, the Bitcoin price is going, I mean, it's going berserk, it's going bananas, right? Um, yeah. Your history, maybe you can tell me why Bitcoin is going up so much and that's what, what's really driving the price. Okay, so basically, you, uh, normal people has an understanding of the prices which based on uh, uh, supply and demand which means like, you know, short of supply and uh, uh, great of the demand price goes up. But that's a very classic uh, economics understanding. But uh, for, for cryptocurrency or for Bitcoin, it started with what they call um, Austria economic style, which means that all prices are based on consensus. So as Bitcoin gets popular and popular, I'm watching this through last like eight, 10 years, so there's more people know and more people want to find out what's the advantage of uh, a Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency better than the fiat currency. And people start to realize it is, uh, first of all, it's privacy. Second, you own your own asset. So it's, it's uh, protecting a private asset. Thirdly, you can transfer it freely. So with this three very, very advanced points that people find that's that's what they need especially when when the world it can you know economy goes uh, you know goes down people it's like buying gold but it's probably safer than gold so they can you know store it on on the uh, blockchain wall and no one knows it's better than bury a gold on the on the ground so that's what i i think that's the reason sorry you're sorry <laughs> There's been, it's a, there's been a huge amount of traction in the Bitcoin price the last few months. I think PayPal has talked about um, putting some. Um, I think some of the yep. big funds, Grayscale has been buying a whole bunch of, of Bitcoin. Some of the celebrities have been buying it. It's gone way past $18,000 per Bitcoin. Um, yep. Do you think there's more room for Bitcoin to grow? Um, and do you, or do you think it's really at, at the top of the, of the price chart already? Uh, for me, okay, if you look at the price-wise, short-term and long-term. Okay, short-termly, if uh, Bitcoin can break through 20,000 and uh, will go, go down, I, for my prediction, at the end of this year, which is uh, 31st of December, uh, between this, we almost have a month's time, I think it's a greater chance to, to, to be more than 20,000 per coin, but it will drop. June, January, and February, but uh, I'm estimating next year, in year 2000, uh, uh, in year 2021, we'll go up to around uh, 50,000 US or more. What so I'm, I'm looking. That's crazy. So that is insane. Um, what, what, what do you think is going to make it go to 50,000? Oh, as I mentioned, there's, uh, see, you were mentioned like PayPal, or, you know, all these uh, big uh, companies that are accepting and also collecting it. So people will have more confidence. So the consensus become from very minor group of people become a majority. So which means more people want it and more people accepting it and uh, price goes up. It, because so far, uh, for last 10 years of development of blockchain, as it's only only about 30 million people that actually in the world has their hands on, on any sort of uh, cryptocurrency, but that's very, very small percentage of the total world population. Okay, I tr I've tried to buy Bitcoin in the past, right, um, Kevin, some mm -hmm. years ago, maybe two, three years ago. And what I found out is that the price of Bitcoin is here, but what I paid for Bitcoin was quite much higher because of the commissions that the platform takes. So there seems to be a lot of friction and in terms of the market, uh, the price clarity, there isn't a standard platform or exchange to buy Bitcoin on. You buy Bitcoin any number of ways through any number of platforms. Um, do you, is that a real issue in terms of um, the price discovery of Bitcoin, in terms of the accessibility of Bitcoin? 
Uh, actually, no. I think you're talking about a while ago. And these days, uh, the the Bitcoin price is very, very clear, and uh, there's many, many uh, 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 good exchanges that you can you can you can buy. For example, first of all, we have uh, a website called CMC, which is Coin Market Cap, and that's the website for all the crypto uh, currency prices. So when people are doing OTC, for example, if I sell Bitcoin to you, we will talk about what price we should we take, and we do the same CMC price. And also with um, uh, if you go to exchange such as Binance or Hobby or Coinbase, and uh, I think they only charge you about uh, 0.1 percent of the uh, the uh, exchange fee. That's all. Okay, so that 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 means it's, it was quite some time ago because if that clarity wasn't there when I bought it two three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> when, when um, I first entered, you have to you have to put a notice board on the BBS said, "Oh, I have such." How many Bitcoin wants to sell? Now, who wants to buy? It takes yeah. like two or three days to, to reply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, well, what about the other? I mean, because there's a whole bunch of cryptocurrencies, right? I mean, Ethereum is the mm -hmm. second most popular. Then you've also got Bitcoin Cash. You've got Bit, there's, there's other derivatives of Bitcoin, right? Bit, um, yeah. Bitcoin SV as well. Um, and then you've got things like XRP. XRP has really come up in the last few years. Then things like Tether. Yeah. Um, What's your view of these other cryptocurrencies and how do they kind of like make sense in the next like five, ten years in terms of which is the cryptocurrency to go with? Oh, well, first of all, we have to understand that uh, all the cryptos on the exchanges, they're actually what we call secondary market products, like, you know, like, you know, uh, list goes shares. It really, the prices, everything's really done do much with what they were really doing. Okay, if technically wise, I would say Bitcoin, basically got nothing that we can use, but it's the oldest one, is the one with the most consensus. So it become the gold of in, in cryptocurrencies. And uh, I personally, I like uh, Ether the most because it really solves problem. It provides smart contract. Before Ether, we cannot issue so many coins. Is there's always lots of uh, technical barriers, but now with um, Ethereum uh, smart contract, and you can do, you can issue a coin within five minutes, which means that you can tokenize any asset personally in five minutes. It's like, you know, TikTok. Before we, we want to go on TV, we have to be invited. We have spent lots of time and effort to broadcasting our thoughts. But now with TikTok or blog, you can, everyone can become a television channel, right? So that's freedom. So with uh, cryptocurrency, it's, it's the same. Before we want to list our company to get public funding into it to help the company to grow, we have to go through a long process, which some, some business just died because of that non-efficient process. But now with uh, cryptocurrencies, especially what Ether provides, you can list your, your own personal company in five minutes. It depends on how you promote it. Okay, so Bitcoin is eighteen and a half thousand dollars Ethereum is 581 as of this moment that we're talking. Do you think Ethereum has got a way, yeah. way, way to go? Uh, Price-wise, uh, it's different. It's really, that, mm, it's really not depending how good is your product. It's really how, depending how good is your token economics. Because we know um, Bitcoin's recession, like, you know, every uh, four years, the production amount shrinks. But Ether doesn't have a limit of the uh, coin amount. So which means it's like any other fiat currency, you can just keep printing it. Okay. So I think that's the uh, main, pri main reason that Ether didn't go up, follow uh, Bitcoin like last time. But okay. the total value of Ether goes up. I see. Okay, well, um, I, I've looked at your profile, Kevin, and uh, you, you, run, you run a whole bunch of businesses, but you also do Colin Star, right? Colin Star um, was the most interesting because you do the whole ecosystem of, of, of uh, crypto uh, fundraising, right? You do uh, yeah, yeah. white paper audits, you do, um, you do uh, ICOs, you do strategic advice, you do all kinds of stuff. Um, you even do token sales and book building. So, so yeah. tell me about how that business model works. 
Oh, well, as a blockchain, -er, that we, the first mission we have is to like spreading the, the, the philosophy of blockchain. And secondly, if we, no one will help us, we have to help ourselves. The re, so all the, all the investment, all the other industry that we get involved is to serve the purpose of getting blockchain philosophy separated. Okay. So I know that you, because uh, we met in Malaysia, uh, we met through a mutual friend, um, but now yeah. you're financial um, controller of Country Heights. C Country Heights yeah. is a property developer. Um, so yeah. what kind of stuff do you, do you do there? I mean, what to the extent that you can tell me, um, what, is, what is the grand vision there? Okay. So first of all, we know Country Heights is a very old listing company in Malaysia. It used to be a very innovative company saying, you know, building a nice uh, uh, houses around the, the, the mines and all these uh, mountains building like um, a golf course at that. But it seems like, you know, uh, for recent years, we don't hear much things from Country High, but our teacher, Dan Three Li King Yo, he's a very innovative person. And uh, he thinks that we can use blockchain technology to provide people with better living uh, uh, facilities. Also provide people with easier access to share the profit that in, in the uh, uh, real estate industry. Okay, so how, how will it work? Because, because of the global nature of Bitcoin or, or cryptocurrencies, you can sell tokens to the whole world, right? Obviously, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to go through a, a, a regulatory body like the SC. Uh, pre presumably, yeah. Um, yeah. you can raise funds from, from the whole world. Yes. Uh, how, how is it done? I mean, this, this sounds amazing, right? But how, how is it done on a practical basis? Okay. So we know the ICO age, like uh, three years ago, like it's a mongrel. And, you know, lots of uh, project comes out and raise lots of funding and then collapse. So people, are, investors are getting more cautious. Now we need, um, you know, a good background company to do it also with a government licensing to endorse it. So that's what Country High is doing. Like uh, that's really, you know, personally himself has, uh, you know, Labon Investment Bank license. And also he backing up all these things that he will do with his uh, land and assets. So which give the investors uh, a, a very secure place to, to invest. That's the first thing. Second thing is with his personal advantage that we can attract lots of fundings from overseas to help uh, Malaysia to develop. You, as we know, you know, Singapore is already doing it. And uh, Hong Kong is not friendly, friendly with it. So it's, it's go, just going down. We can see the you know, examples already. So for people like them, right, would it be best to raise in, Ether, in Ethereum or in Bitcoins? Or what, what, how would it work? I think for, for, uh, for like personal investors, it's better just to, to invest in uh, uh, what you call stable coin for example if i i have a, a one bitcoin i want to invest in, into a project right and this project actually makes 50 percent profit for me in one year which means i win but however they return me 1.5 bitcoin <coughs> excuse me but the bitcoin price dropped you know what i mean so it's, it's like two fluctuated uh, uh, coins that you can, you're, you're really hard to control your, your loss and profit. So this is, we know that Tether use uh, Ether and use US to provide a stable US dollar. Okay, okay. So you're talking about Tether, right? Okay, and, and about yourself as well, right? I, I know you um, live in Australia, but you've been a Bitcoin kind of like a proponent or participant for the last 10 years. Uh, you've done some amazing things. And I think, I think initially you were one of the early Bitcoin miners. Tell us about the journey, yes. right? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Mm. Kevin, tell us, tell me about you, tell me about you, man. Um, how did you get started and, and how did you make your money? Oh, well, um, I, I'm, I started doing business when I was very young. Like uh, when I studied in the U.S., I started my business and, you know, doing, doing all commercial printings for, for the uh, 
coffee shops and all the shops on the street and I also teaching in the school. So I'm a, I think I have very, very uh, uh, sharp um, commercial sense. And um, in the year 2013, I met my, my friend Ryan and he introduced me the, uh, the philosophy of Bitcoin. Because at that time, I'm quite safe already. I have kids and, you know, have business house. So I feel I was dying because, you know, just every day repeating myself. And um, then he, he, he told me the, uh, the basic fundamental knowledge about, about Bitcoin. And I said, oh, that's what people want. People want privacy. People want their, their uh, asset to be protected by themselves. So, you know, and 30 people want to transfer their money freely. I think with this three point, this if this product, this technology can deliver that, it will be needed, and um, people will love it. The price will go up. Then we we start doing say you know because as a as a traditional entrepreneur, we only only understand how much we put into the and how much we 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 make. So Bitcoin money is something very simple like that. You buy a machine. To debt for ten thousand dollars, and you mine your coins, and within ten months you get your money back, which is, means that your investment is already back, and the 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 uh, the life cycle for a money machine is about eighteen months. So you got another eight months to make a profit. So which means one and a half years that you make about fifty percent of the profit. So which is a good, very good thing. I don't I don't even thought of how you know the Bitcoin price going up or down. So that's the beginning fundamental way of when, when I was investing into, into the Bitcoin machines. Then after that, and uh, I met so many people in, in this industry and young, you know, with all the uh, uh, nice thoughts to change the world. Um, because in year 2014, Bitcoin price goes down very much. And all these machines, the, mine, the, the coins you mine, it's not even afford to pay the electricity bill. But for us, we go borrow money to pay the bill. Why? It's not because we wanted to mine more Bitcoin, more Bitcoin. It's because I think if we don't mine it, if we shut down the machine, the Bitcoin network will go down because we know more machines, the safer the network. If, it, if there's no one mining the Bitcoin, Bitcoin will die. So we rather do that for Bitcoin, for, for the dreams that we believe. And um, th then that's how I make money, just to be honest to what you dream. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin price in October 2013 was $150 for Bitcoin. Um, today it's yeah. 18 and a half thousand. I, I don't even dare to ask you how many Bitcoins you got, Kevin. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're really like a monk, only money making mind, we, uh, I could be very rich. But along the way, we have to invest, we have to, we, we do um, um, uh, mining machines, we even design our own chips, and we do mining pools, we do exchanges, we do everything. But all the investment, all we ha had was uh, Bitcoin, we have to sell it, doesn't matter what, what the price is. And sometimes we even encourage people, when there was like BBS in, in Baidu in, in China, my friend Ryan, he's the, uh, he's the host of it. So who, whoever gave good opinion, we read a good article, we give them Bitcoin for free. <laughs> so we, I don't have much left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does this, mean, <clears throat> does this mean the death of central banks and the death of um, exchanges or well, SECs and sec securities commissions, you know, those, those bodies which regulate the whole um, IPO fundraising mechanism. Do you think yeah. this, is the end of, this is the start of the end for them? No, not at all. I think it's just a new beginning. So we know like, you know, uh, in the older ages, for example, 100 years ago, all the leaders and rulers are dictators, right? One man rule, right? You but mean, you mean once, it's not the same you know, today, the Kevin? You mean it's not uh, the same today? No, I think today's you know, we still see some democracies. That, that, that's, that's not too bad. And this is improved. You know, it's not like, you know, before the, the emperor wants to kill someone, just kill someone. At least, you know, they have to use some alibis, right? <laughs> but so what I think is the technology is pushing the, to, the, the, the whole 
human management system. So we call government a human management system. See, if we keep pushing blockchain te technology, if all the voting, everything's using blockchain to do it, right? And all the uh, uh, funds transfer, everything, we don't have a central hub like, like a bank, like current bank, and people can transfer money peer to peer, right? Because eventually people will use it. And the, the, uh, the governments, they will start to compromise. So they will give up what they took for, from people. What can, you know, there's always a lot of freedom that taken by the rulers, by, by the, you know, high and high hierarchy people. We see it making progress from like 2000 years ago until now that all the rulers are giving back the rights to, to ordinary people. That we believe this technology will not just, will not kill the banks. We still need banks, but they were running in a more fair way for general public. public. Okay, okay, I know you've got to go. So one last question. Um, do you think the ICOs and, and cryptocurrencies are the fundraising mechanism of the future? And that anybody can raise money at any time from, from cryptocurrencies? I think so. I think so. So you can't stop people borrowing money from their friends and relatives, right? So that's our funds, funds raising. So as now you can persuade people that listens to you and believe in you that you can make money from or you can pay it back. I mean, it's, it's just so personal. Why government gets so nervous about it? Yeah, that's a good point, man. Kevin, hey, thank you for your time, yeah. man. I'll see you back in Malaysia. Take care. Okay, okay. Thank you, John. See yeah, you have too. a nice day. You too. Take care. Thanks.